people don't usually think of corals as animals. They just consider them as rocks or plants. And I can understand why, because even if you're underwater and you have a close look at them, not much seems to be happening. So the problem with studying corals is that they live in this completely different time dimension. A lot of behaviors actually take hours or days or sometimes even weeks. And it's really hard to study those. We still know extremely little about the behavior of corals. When we study corals, we go underwater using scuba equipment and we can only spend a limited amount of time there. So we only get this small snapshot of what they do. To be able to understand some of these very slow moving processes, we use time-lapse photography. We take a photo every minute or every hour, in some cases only once a day. But it basically gives us all these images that we can then put together and watch it at a much faster speed. With a lot of these time lapses, we really don't know what to expect at all. So it's always a real surprise to see what the eventual time lapse looks like. And sometimes we see behaviors that totally blow your mind. Because of the little space that's available on coral reefs, there is this extreme competition between corals, with some coral species being more aggressive than others. And I managed to capture these two corals attacking each other. One's flashing its polyps to try and sting the other coral, whereas the other coral is actually expelling its gut onto the other coral to try and digest it. I study coral reefs in the twilight zone, and that's this zone that's in between the shallow coral reefs that we know and the deep sea. It's this in-between zone between 200 and 500 feet that remains largely unstudied and that we know very little about. On the deep reef, we find a lot of so-called mushroom corals that are free living and not attached to the reef substrate. The fact that these corals are free living allows them to move around on the seabed. Very often you see these mushroom corals turned over, upside down, and so I always wondered whether that means that that's the end of it, that's when they die, or whether they actually have the capacity to flip themselves back over. We use time-lapse photography in an aquarium, and we actually managed to document this process where you see a mushroom coral that's upside down, and then somehow manages to just flip itself back over right in the position it originally was. So that was an incredible surprise to actually see that happen and to be able to capture that. One of the problems with studying these deep reefs is that we obviously get very little time at these depths to look at these communities. And so we've started to use time-lapse to capture some of these processes that happen over longer periods of time. One thing that we discovered is just the pervasive role of sedimentation. The sediment shifts around on the seabed and sometimes entirely covers some of those corals. And so one of the things we looked at was to see how corals can actually get rid of that sediment that's on top of them. It was just completely amazing because it just looked like this alien life form that was blowing itself up in these pulses and basically got rid of the sediment that way. One thing that we've wanting to figure out for a long time is how corals on the deep reef reproduce. We know in the shallow that a lot of corals reproduce through this broadcast spawning. They release sperm and eggs during this mass spawning event. We're interesting to know to what extent larvae are moving from deeper reefs into shallow reefs. To what extent deeper reefs and shallow reefs are connected. Some of the major disturbances affecting shallow reefs, like storm events, like warm water bleaching events, are predominantly affecting the shallow reef, but not so much the deep reefs. And so we think that these deeper reefs might actually be very important as a refuge against those disturbances. 
and somehow might be important in the recovery of shallow reefs by producing larvae that then settle again in the shallow and grow out to new coral colonies. Studying these reefs is incredibly exciting. Some of the most fundamental processes we just know nothing about. I think it's important to study the vulnerabilities of this ecosystem. And for that, we obviously have to look at the individual organisms and study their life history. So I think time-lapse will always remain an incredibly valuable tool for us to document some of these processes.